there's something special about red wine. And I don't mean special in the good way. I mean special sort of in the way that my parents describe me to their friends by saying, Abby's a little special. I know that just means weird, mom and dad. But the thing about red wine is it has this terrible ability to almost instantaneously give you a headache. And I'm not talking about a headache where you wake up the day after and your brain is pounding. I'm talking about getting a headache like as you're finishing one small glass of red wine. And this is such a common problem in red wine that even scientific researchers are looking into it. In just last month, a new study was published that claimed to have pinpointed exactly what about red wine could lead to these throbbing headaches. Now, if you're someone like me who is lucky and does not suffer from red wine headaches, uh, knock on wood, hopefully that's, oh, my dog, Jazzy. That was me. That was me. These are headaches that can set in just minutes after drinking even a small glass of red wine. At least that's what my friend Jess told me, which is why I was interested in this topic because Jess and I, who are adorable, we traveled Eastern Europe together this summer for several weeks where we successfully avoided red wine. Well, just avoided red wine, I did still drink red wine. When I first started looking into this topic, I was surprised to find that medically, there are two distinct types of alcohol-induced headaches. The first is called a primary or immediate headache, and this means that the headache sets in about 30 minutes to three hours once alcohol has been consumed. So this is the classic red wine headache that my friend was telling me about. It can set in very quickly. The second type of headache is called secondary or a delayed headache. And this is what probably most people have experienced uh, once or twice or more in their life, that this is a typical hangover headache. A secondary headache sets in five to 12 hours after alcohol has been consumed. And what I find even more interesting is that people that have a problem with red wine, they are able to drink the same amounts or more of white wine and beer or other alcohol without having the same terrible reaction. So it seems to me that it's something special. Why do I keep using the word special? There's something specifically bad about red wine. Because of this, we're pretty sure it's something specific to red wine, a specific molecule or compound that causes this issue with the headaches. The problem is there's been a lot of top contenders for what is this molecule. One of these molecules is histamine, and this is a chemical released during fermentation, and red wine is fermented, so it has histamine, and we know this can cause some people's blood vessels to dilate and lead to headaches. The only thing is, histamine is found in a whole slew of foods and beverages, so it doesn't really make sense. Another suspect is tannins, and these compounds are found in the skins, the seeds, the stems of grapes, and tannins are what give red wine that really like bitter, astringent uh, feeling when you drink it. But we also know tannins in certain sensitive individuals can also cause issues with headaches. Sulfites are another compound that's been sort of one of these contenders, and that's because sulfites are specifically added to wine. They are a preservative agent to make sure the wine doesn't spoil or extend its shelf life. And we do know that specifically people with asthma tend to be very sensitive to sulfites in foods and drinks. The only problem with all these top three contenders is that no one has proposed a specific way that these compounds in the red wine trigger these red wine headaches. It, it's sort of like we've thrown a lot of spaghetti at the wall with these ideas, but nothing has really stuck because it's, it hasn't made total sense yet. This is until about a month ago when a new study was published that proposed an entirely different hypothesis that didn't cite any of the usual suspects I just mentioned. This group of researchers said the compound to blame is quercetin. This is found in grapes, but also a lot of other fruits or vegetables, and it's even sold as a supplement. Side note here, guys, just for you, supplements, 
there's no regulations. Supplements, you can make up whatever you want and make it a supplement. It's not like food or drugs where there's regulation and oversight. Supplements, the, their regulation, I would say, is scientifically what we call willy-nilly. Don't believe anything you hear about supplements. Back to quercetin, back to the topic. So quercetin, when it's in our bloodstream in the presence of alcohol, say like if you just drink a glass of red wine, quercetin actually gets converted to a new compound called quercetin gluconeride. And this altered version of quercetin, this quercetin gluconeride, this is where the scientists think the issue lies because this molecule is thought to inhibit alcohol metabolism in the liver. But to fully understand why, let's just do a quick crash course in how is alcohol metabolized in our body. Hey guys, sorry for the quick interruption, but I just wanted to ask that if you're getting value from this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so say you're gonna risk it tonight, you're gonna drink a glass of red wine, right? Live it on the edge. The alcohol in that red wine will be metabolized in our liver, and luckily it's a pretty simple two-step process. So we have alcohol, and that first gets converted to acetaldehyde by an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. Next, that acetaldehyde is converted to acetate by a second enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase. So pretty straightforward two-step process. Okay, but where does this quercetin come into play? So if quercetin and alcohol are found together in our bloodstream, which would happen if you drink a glass of red wine, the quercetin actually gets converted to a new compound called quercetin gluconeride. What this compound does is it inhibits that enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase, which remember is very important for converting acetaldehyde to acetate as alcohol is being metabolized. This study found that the presence of quercetin gluconeride can inhibit this enzyme up to 80%. So it makes this enzyme terrible at doing its job. And even just the presence of quercetin can also inhibit this enzyme, but to a much lesser extent. With this enzyme working so incredibly inefficient, we start to get this buildup of acetaldehyde. And here's where sort of all the pieces of the puzzle get put into place. It's been known for a long time that acetaldehyde is a toxin that causes facial flushing, nausea, and headaches. So what we've done by imbibing that red wine, which is unusually high in quercetin compared to the other fruits and veggies that also naturally contain quercetin, we've essentially started to build up a toxin in our body, so no wonder we don't feel so good. And the discomfort that is caused by these high acetaldehyde levels, this is not something new. In fact, it's actually exploited by a medication that's often given to recovering alcoholics. It's called disulfiram, and it's meant to make sure they don't continue to drink alcohol, because what this medicine does is if they drink alcohol, it makes sure that a lot of acetaldehyde builds up and that they surely do not feel good if they touch alcohol. Many people of East Asian descent also struggle with high acetaldehyde concentrations. This is due to a slightly different mechanism. Their enzyme naturally just works a little slower. It, the, their enzyme just converts that acetaldehyde to acetate slower naturally, so it's really easy for them to have that buildup of acetaldehyde and experience that flushing of the face, the headaches, all those terrible symptoms. If quercetin is the problem, why not just make wine that doesn't contain quercetin? Well, it, it's not that easy to solve. So grapes make quercetin in response to sunlight. And unfortunately, if we want grapes and therefore wine, yeah, we need some sunlight. So that's not really negotiable but I do think it's possible to lower the amount of quercetin in wines, which some wines do have a lesser amount and some wines don't. That's what makes, that's what makes this whole red wine headache thing so frustrating is not all red wines trigger it, but people never know which type will. But the final amount of quercetin in that red wine just depends on so many different variables. If we talk simply about the cultivation practices that influence it, 
there's several including are the vines trellised or not is the crop pruned are the leaves removed and that doesn't even it take into account all the different processing steps that we also know can influence the amount of quercetin these are factors like the skin contact time during fermentation what fining procedures are used, and even what aging methods. This unpredictability is very frustrating for people who want to drink red wine, but they are also prone to red wine headaches because you never know if a bottle will trigger these symptoms or will it be totally fine. Now I know someone here currently has a red wine headache and that's why they found this video. But from what I can tell, there's no like magic bullet for getting rid of this type of headache. And I'm not a doctor. I, well, I am a doctor, but a doctor of food science, not of like the human body. From what I've read on the internet though, it just, it, you know, it says normal things like drink a lot of water and hydrate, take some pain reliever, and really what you need is time. So I'm sorry, I have no magic cures for you. And just like that, another food science mystery is solved. If you enjoyed this type of investigation, I highly recommend you check out my video on color changer marshmallows. So I, again, was playing food detective to figure out how Jet Puff pulled off this color changing trick.